Welcome to season three of On the Spot. In one of my previous conversations with my guest, Kareem, we spoke about having more diasporan support and intervention in Africa, but specifically Sarah Leone. Now, my guest, who is the president of the Sarah Leone Union in France, yes, I know, we also had a conversation a while back with a founding member of the Sierra Leone Strasbourg Union in France. Now, the difference in perspective between both organizations is just simple. One is starting the intervention with Sierra Leoneans living in France. The other is having that intervention back home in Sierra Leone. And that's what my guest is going to talk us through on today. Now, they have done a series of interventions in Sierra Leone, supporting people, underprivileged communities and um, underprivileged persons as well. Now, he as well is one of very few Sierra Leoneans and probably Africans or African who is a landscape gardener right here in France. Just like my previous guest, he came to Sierra Leone with little to nothing in his pocket, but today runs a highly successful business. This is On The Spot. For those of you joining, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Abdul. Abdul Karim Kaloko. You both, you know, my previous guests, you know, Abdul Karim. That's me. Wow. <laughs> you know, like, you people are going to make me confuse each other now. But nonetheless, thank you so much for joining me on the show and um, the great work that your organization, the Sierra Leone, um, you know, union in France is doing. Take us through, first of all, on how, because you're one of the founding members as well of, of this organization. Why did you guys decide to start a union? And what has the, what has the intervention been like since its inception? Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your show. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to speak to my country directly. And I'm very happy uh, for that. And my name is Abdul Karim Kaloko. Um, I'm here now since 1999. Um, I come here as a teenager. And Who could you speak French? <laughs> <laughs> I not speak French at that time, you know, and it was a very, very difficult at that time because of this, uh, the language barrier. But uh, at that time, we, I was uh, very lucky, you know, we go to school uh, to, to learn the language and learn something. You know, so since 1989, we go to school and you no know, after try to land a job, and, and this is my job, as you say just now, I'm a landscape uh, gardener. Getting, getting you know, when people finish their home, and I'm trying to organize their home to make their home beautiful, and uh, to make their home the come, yeah, that they got a call, yeah, to come make it look beautiful. <laughs> Exactly, you know, I'm trying to do my best, you know, to give them a, a good home and a good place for them in their home. So why did you, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting, landscape gardening. Why did you choose that? Not a lot of um, people would, and, and you actually went to study it. Again, this is very, very rare. Why did you choose that, this part? Well, for me, it's something like a destiny, you know. Um, when we come to France, you know, where I will stay in uh, a daycare home where they take care of teenagers uh, that don't have a parent in this country. And, you know, when I come from Freetown, I was a trader in Sierra Leone, you know. We used to go and sell, as we say, nylon bag, <laughs> you know, to get a living wow. to, to take care of our, our family. It's in the market? Yeah, in Freetown, yeah. Wow. So, so as we come here, that is, you know, I had to go and do business, you know. But unfortunately, where I stay, uh, the the manager of the the home said, uh, since you don't have, well, uh, since you don't uh, have, uh, because in the, we call it a stage, you know, where you can get the first experience, mm -hmm. you know. So he took me in the local mayor city around uh, by the place Ghani in France 
So I can do this game landscape for something like three weeks. So, but it was uh, good and they were happy about me. So, you know, they advised me, the, the, the boss man uh, said, well, I would like you to do this job. I said, why not? Uh, he said, but I want you to go to school because if you want to do this job, you must go to school. I said, okay, no problem. Because, uh, you know, he took me like uh, his son. Okay, he find me a school, a private school where I started uh, my, my cross, but at the first time I don't have, uh, I don't speak the language. So I go and test, I fail the test the first year. The next year I go and try my, try again. So it was uh, nice for me, they, they, they take me in the school. So I started my cross for three years, you know, as a landscape gardener. And after three years, I get my, my diploma. And you did for my diploma. Diploma. Don't worry. After three years, I get my, my degree, as, as we yes. say. So then after I started, uh, I started uh, uh, working in the in the mayor in the in the local city council. Okay. But with time, with time, I go more and do uh, do another um, another Let's training, study. another training, yeah, okay. to get more experience because uh, this job is very, very large. You know, you have to speak uh, Latin because mm -hmm. even the, the the name of the plant is on Latin, yeah. so you have to you have to learn every day. So that's the way I entered that job that's up to how now. You got it. Exactly. And you've been able to. Okay, obviously, you You know what? We're going to take a break because this is a very interesting question. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. More still to come on the program. Welcome back to the show. Still have with me Abdul Karim Kaloko. Okay, so you, you know, started this training for, you know, landscape gardening. And obviously, you had, you had a job because you had a boss. How were you able to sort of grow from being an employee to becoming an employer? Because you started your own business now and you are employing other people in this, in this business. Well, as you know, in, in anything you do, you have to take a risk. And as, because if you don't take a risk, you cannot achieve. Yeah. And as I know that in this life, that's one of the key for success. Mm -hmm. And if it's that is one of the key, you must go and find the way. Yeah. So, you know, I started to work alone the weekend and after my job, yeah. you know. So you were juggling both the work and the weekend personal uh, of, job. Of course, yeah. So since I started to get more customers and and the money was coming in. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> then he decided but it's time must, for me to go make money. Yeah, you must. Uh, you must. You know, as I said just just now, mm -hmm. you must take the, you must uh, take, take the adventure. Risk, yeah. You know, in anything you do. So I started to walk. Um, after I have to, I have to, I have to get uh, one boy walking with this boy, two, three. Now we are working now four. Well. Yeah, we are trying. Uh, we are trying anyway. So how 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 went then? Because this is this is a very busy period for you. This is is very busy for you. How then? Or where did the notion that we need to start a community in Sierra Leone? We need to start a union. And where did that come from? And and why? Okay, um, because um, when we have the problem in Sierra Leone, that is Ebola. You know and we see our people dying of the disease. And it was very sad for, for us to sit in here and doing nothing. You know, one of my friends by the name is Ansumana Abega. He's one of my best friends. You know, we just say, well, let's start something to help our country. But in this country, um, whatever you want to do, you must have an association. Yeah. But before we don't know, you know, so because if I want to collect something to you or any other Sierra I have to get something legal mm -hmm. to, to do that because this country, you must do like that. Yeah. And if you want to get something bigger, you have to get something that will register an account if somebody wants to it give you a to register, okay? Yeah. Then we started inquiring how to do it and we do it successfully. And then we started to go to Sierra Leoneans in France at that time 
Um, because that time is Ebola, it was very, very tough for the country, you know, because we need, um, you know, mask, uh, yeah, uh, combination for for the, for contamination, the health workers, yeah. for the health workers, boots, a glove, you know. So we started we started collect those things, and with the fund uh, the people give us, mm -hmm. we buy enough stuff, and we put it in a container. Yeah. That was our, our first action in. Sierra Leone. Then we send it to Freetown, and and Rita is one of our okay. our and our. Rita, we say thank you to it's, you. It's one of our. Because you know it, it is very important that we need to sort of um you know say a, a big mm -hmm. thanks to Henrietta and to Henrietta Bawa, aka Etta Bawa, because in, you know in many cases people people are just not honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it, it could have been a situation where you send those things down to Sierra Leone and they would never reach the beneficiaries. Exactly. So well done to Etta, she did indeed distribute of um, you know, those items that, you know, was delivered. Yeah. So, yeah. And she is one of, uh, you know, if we continue, because all our program um, over there is in Rita, because as you know, Freetown, it's very, very difficult to do something there when you are not, when there. You're not there. You know, yes. you have to have someone who is very, very devoted and honest to do something for you in that yeah. in that country and Enreta is uh, you know why i'm talking about Enreta because today if i know you it's yeah, Enreta because exactly. uh, you know she give me she sometimes I, I call her i say Enreta, i'm very tired you always give me a uh, courage you know yeah. let's continue yeah. we cannot stop in this way yeah. you know she always tell me that like Sierra Leone, if you need to say if you put the you you will send send her yeah. At least not your best way for for help the, yeah, the, uh, the country and yeah. we continue after we try for we build water well in a mountain court mountain court i remember yes. we build water well we up to now the community they they, they take care of even they don't build um, a, a cultural center because when people they can get water then they pay small thing for for very important for yes. for get money for do mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. and you get the the most light we come after back we we will be very very active mm -hmm. because that's time in the place where that will be happening yeah. we will send uh, food stuff because that time people need food yeah. you know food stuff after we send uh, some used clothes we we send us and you know when we do that we see when they give the poor people or people that live in the daycare home, you know, that's a victory for, for me and my crew and my friends, you know, because Trilon is our home Absolutely. and no place like home. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to take another break. <laughs> and this is on the spot coming up still, uh, you know, he's still here with me. We'll take another break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the show. So, Abdul, before we, you know we you know took the break, we're just talking about you know the intervention that you know your the Sierra Leone Union here in France have been able to give back to um, Sierra Leoneans. I, I, I did speak to um, another guest who is you know founding member of the Sierra Leone Union in Strasbourg, and you know one thing he mentioned was you know they have the plans to. Um, you know, have various interventions in Sierra Leone, but they just want it to start, first of all, with the community people, because there are a lot of people who need a lot of support. Um, in your case, in the union here, um, how do you support Sierra Leoneans who are living in France? Um, as for me, Sierra Leone in France is, uh, we are doing a um, great um, issue to help people, because sometimes when, if Serena come to France, mm -hmm. you know, you don't understand nothing. Mm. You don't speak the language. No. You don't know where to go. Mm. You don't know where to start. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And Serena in France always come and assist them to show where they can go and seek asylum. Um, the place where they can have a facility to do something and to make their process go faster. Mm -hmm. Because you know, this country is very, very, very uh, separated in different departments. Some departments are very harder than other departments. Mm -hmm. We can say some departments, they don't give a paper. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> some department softer yeah. than some other department. Mm -hmm. So we they shoot you in the uh, right, in the right, right direction. Yeah. Say go na this place. This no place is well exactly. <laughs> and yeah. most of the time we they ensure that make another Sierra Leoneans we did there. We go collect you and try for show you the local system mm -hmm. how to survive because here it's very very difficult mm -hmm. because you have two possibility. Either you take the wrong direction your process will be longer, longer, longer than, yeah. you know, or someone that made a mistake, he will correct you to go to the shorter way yeah. to have your, your document because um, when you arrive in this place, you have to get uh, accommodation and they, they can accept your asylum, mm -hmm. they can give you something like three months, six months stay mm -hmm. to circulate. Because that is the main thing. When you come he here, you cannot move around because there is no document. So we assist people and we show them how to move on, how to start their process yeah. in the, the asylum way. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So how easy is it for, you know, let me, let me I'm not going to say Sarah again, but how easy is it for Africans to succeed in France? Um, you know, there is two ways. You have to be perseverant and you have to provoke your destiny. Oh, I love that. You, you know, gotta provoke your destiny. You have to provoke your destiny because yes. you cannot sit down here and say everything. You know, this Europe, the problem is very, very different. Yeah. Very, very different. When people see you, they think that everything's okay. Mm. You know, and why I said you have to provoke your destiny. You know, when you have a chance, you have to make you a good use it. Yeah. of it. And how? You know, as this country, we see so many examples from other people. You know, and what I, uh, what I observe in Europe, you know, most of we, the migrants, if we are very, very hardworking, we are going to achieve because we know where we are from. Where we're from yeah. And sometimes I will tell my friends, you know, even when I'm riding in the good road, you know, I said, wow, I have a chance. You know, even when I'm riding in the good road, I said, I have a chance. So that chance, I'm making use of it. Yeah. You know, because I know where I'm from. Yeah. And I'm very proud to be a Sierra Leonean. I'm very proud to be here. Why? Because, you know, I have, I have, I have suffering in my life, in my country. And, you know, even why um, with my job, with no time, with family issue, I always give time for, for my association. And that time reflect to my country. Yeah. That's the time that I give for my country. Yeah. Because in here, we are organizing um, two events in France to, to get fun. Because people give us a use, uh, use clothes, yeah. use things. Yeah. We don't have the money to to send it, send it back home. So we make two events here, one in August. We make the barbecue show. Mm -hmm. This is the eighth time we are doing it, you know, wow. and the barbecue wow. show and we make a, a Valentine show. Mm -hmm. And this two show give us financial uh, access yeah. to ship things in, in the country. So, yeah. so it's not really getting really easy, you know, with uh, our jobs, our family lives and another issue but for me that is my own sacrifice yeah. my own little sacrifice to, so to my country you, before i let you go is there a huge sierra leone community in france and if yes how are they faring okay now i can say we are the second generation yeah okay. second generation because when we came to france you know we can we, we count can't. ourselves ourselves <laughs> but today you know uh, the community is starting growing and growing in a positive way wow. because now we are interconnecting with other cities like as you say just now you just interview another colleagues in Strasbourg yeah. now any city have an association why it's very important because when you they are in your city mm -hmm. you know your problem mm -hmm. you know how number you are mm -hmm. and when there is a problem the, f the nearest person can give you oh, rescue. Yes. So it's very important for all the Sierra Leoneans to know themselves yeah. over there. 
and we do the same things in Paris mm -hmm. and we connect with each other mm -hmm. and we give us support whenever uh, other city make something you know we go there and support them mm -hmm. and that is the occasion for we for our children to see each other because the the main things again to make barbecue or to get uh, somewhere we are we okay. this alien uh, can meet yeah. it's not for we it's for our children you know my my daughter will see another Syrian you know you can see the flag you can see where they speak Creole yeah. you know see we are someone we are our, our culture it's, it's a very very it's very very important for yeah. us you know to meet to see as you know normal we Sierra Leone yeah, no. <laughs> as we see so we will keep camping yeah. you know because you know our country is a very small country we can say Everybody know each other. Yeah. Hey, also you be there, like you see, you be there. So you know, that make some you know something special. Yes, it's special. You know because yeah, life is very, very private. You know, everybody yeah. do his things on your own side, <laughs> and that is one of the time. You know, this is summer time. Yeah. Where people meet, we see, we get good time. Yeah. We talk about don't country. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so, Okay. So that's one of the things that uh, especially to me make me really happy and have always the courage to, to continue because as you know, okay. we to kiss alone and they don't for you. But you know, but they try we try our best for make we yeah. we able to get this uh, friend and brotherhood. Yeah. Uh, but most of the case everything is okay. Okay. Mm. Well thank you so much, Abdo. Continue to do the amazing work that you're doing. Um you know, it's very important that several unions especially those who are just coming in have somewhere and have someone that they can reach out to that they can feel is family um you know it, it it's a lot when people get uprooted from their place of comfort where they have known all their lives to a different new strange location it it, it does take a lot so thank you for the good work you're doing and uh, good luck with your business as well of course, uh, this is on the spot coming up next are my final words. In my final words, my guest has shown that we all can be a source of hope and support to one another, irrespective of who we are or where we are. Thank you to the Sierra Leone Union here in France for providing that support and that needed community to help empower each and every one of their community member here in France. I'd also like to say thank you and well done to Abdul for the initiative, having understood, having experienced what it really felt living and being alone in the strangest country. Hopefully that support that he is extending to other people like a ripple effect would also be extended to another person. As we always say, several unions don't always get along. Sometimes that may be true, but my experience so far here in France has been a very pleasant one. Thanks to the several unions that I have met along my journey on, of course, this episode and this series in capturing the amazing stories that we have been able to bring to you. They have been very supportive, very helpful, and most importantly, made my stay a really pleasant one. For those of you who are still not yet sure about reaching out or joining the community, I would say, why not give it a shot? Thanks to every one of you for tuning in, of course, this is part of my European series here on season three of the show. And like I always say, if you can think it and you are definitely ready to work for it, you will definitely, most definitely achieve it. That has been the story that has really resonated with all my guests who all came here having nothing but today have been able to make a difference in both their lives and those of other people. 
In the end, hard work, tenacity, consistency, and definitely not giving up is the watchword and the secret and the key to your destiny. Just like my guest said, you have to provoke your destiny. Thanks to our partners for supporting us to bring in this amazing conversation to you. Until next week, when we'll be back, continue to stay fabulous.